Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Over the years I've made a couple of videos on the Bent Pyramid, one of which focused on the shape and whether or not I thought it showed two phases of construction and the other one looked at the casing stones, and the claims that they're not Chura limestone, but are in fact a form of geopolymer concrete. The latter idea is heavily promoted by Joseph Davidovitz, who really is the main man when it comes to the geopolymer hypothesis, and this is because of a scientific paper from 2011, published in Volume 65, Issue 2 of Materials Letters. The work by Kenneth Mackenzie and five of his colleagues is titled Were the Casing Stones of Snefru's Bent Pyramid in Dashur Cast or Carved? Multinuclear NMR Evidence I've gone through this before, so in a nutshell, when the scientists analysed the casing stones, they were found to be made of limestone grains, which did come from the Chura quarries, but they were found to be cemented with an amorphous calcium silicate gel, and this must have been formed by human intervention and there was also the addition of extra silica, likely diatomaceous earth, and possibly from the Fayum area of Egypt. The paper says that due to the uniformity of the calcite grains in the casing stones, the builders of the pyramid may have transported finely weathered limestone from Chura, located on the east side of the Nile, and taken it to the west side to make their synthetic blocks. The research seems pretty compelling, and although Egyptologists still attest that the casing stones are carved blocks of stone from the Chura quarries, the science says otherwise. It implies that the ancient Egyptians of the 4th dynasty had already developed the technology to create a synthetic binder. In effect, they could manufacture rocks. Of course, many are still sceptical of the results of the analysis, because it does imply somewhat advanced technology for the ancient Egyptians. The technology to create synthetic stone was obviously so good that it was able to fool future humans until the year 2011. But I've often thought, why bother? Surely collecting the blocks to make the stones, putting the mixture together, and making blocks that look like fine Chura limestone, is actually harder than just quarrying the soft limestone in the first place. Davidovitz says that this is because, in the 4th dynasty it was forbidden to carve stone, because they had a specific religious meaning that related to the creation of life. But to me, that doesn't really make much sense, because ancient Egypt has carved stone everywhere. The why question certainly seems a mystery to me. Why bother? If the casing stones do contain Chura limestone grains, then these were obviously quarried from Chura. So why not just extract the blocks, transport them to Dashur, and then finish them on site? If you have any thoughts on this, please leave a comment below. Another reason to doubt the hypothesis is because the casing stones of the Bent Pyramid are not all the same shapes and sizes. If these are man-made stones, surely they would have been using moulds. And furthermore, the point of this video is to highlight polygonal masonry on the Bent Pyramid, which would surely not be necessary if you're creating man-made uniform-sized blocks. Well, Davidovitz highlights the fact that the old mud brick structures, which obviously use moulded man-made bricks, also didn't have uniform shapes for the bricks. The funerary temple of Kasakemwi of the 2nd dynasty was composed of clay bricks, but there were approximately five different sizes, implying the use of several patterns during construction. So, there could have been multiple moulds of different sizes in use. Maybe this was a way to ensure stability in case of such things like earthquakes. I don't know. Even though the study of the casing stones opens so many new questions, and also creates many problems, you can't get away from the science and the composition of the casing stones. Studies show that they are synthetic rocks. To say that they are in fact natural now requires the same level of scientific proof. The burden of proof is now on the Egyptologists, to counter the research of Mackenzie et al. from 2011. Yes, the quarries of Chura do cover a large area, so maybe more samples need to be taken from more locations at the quarries. 
Maybe the composition of the limestone changes locally, and maybe there is a location in the quarries that does have the same composition of the bent pyramid casing stones, but such a location has never been discovered. But saying that, it still seems very unlikely. The composition of the casing stones indicates a man-made origin because no calcium silicate hydrate gel, the binding agent, has ever been discovered in the Chura limestone quarries naturally. And so the most likely explanation is that this was surely an addition. The evidence has huge implications for the casing stones of the Red Pyramid and of course the three large pyramids of Giza, not to mention the numerous 4th and 5th dynasty stone mastabas that surround them, the ones that I showed you in a previous video that also displayed the incredible polygonal masonry. And that brings us to the subject of this video, the polygonal casing stones of the Bent Pyramid, or I should say polygonal geopolymer casing stones, if I'm taking a scientific approach to my research. Many viewers of my video on the polygonal stonework of the Mastabas of Giza commented that the work is still incredibly difficult, even with limestone, to create the interlocking patterns we see. In that video, I did say it was relatively easy, but that was in comparison to the stonework of ancient Peru, which uses hard igneous rocks and not the soft sedimentary rocks like the Chura limestone. I agree that the finish of the stonework is still very difficult, but I just believe that master stonemasons of the 4th dynasty could have achieved it using offcuts or leftovers from the casing stones of the pyramids. What I would really like to do, on the back of the study from Mackenzie, is to see a chemical analysis of the polygonal finishing stones of these mastabas. Because if they too are shown to be of man-made origin, then we can finally get a good explanation of just how the ancient Egyptians created these polygonal masonry structures. If the blocks were artificial, they could be created into any shape or size that was needed. We don't know how the geopolymer blocks were specifically made on the bent pyramid, the techniques and methods employed, but looking at this photograph and we can see that a number of blocks show very irregular shapes and sizes, like they were made to fill in gaps, maybe errors or broken geopolymer casing stones. Maybe there were zones of weakness in the man-made blocks or errors in the transportation or placement. What we do know is that the Bent Pyramid clearly required a beautifully flat, perfect finish of bright white stone, and by looking at the polygonal masonry and the amount of casing stones that we see to this day, this finish was certainly achieved. But maybe the only way it could be done was by creating synthetic stone. So if the work of Mackenzie is correct, we can answer the question of how Egyptian polygonal stonework was made by manufacturing synthetic stone. We can also answer why it was made, to create a perfectly flat, brilliant white finish to architectural projects. But I don't think this polygonal stonework is comparable to what we see in Peru. Creating synthetic limestone is one thing, but creating a synthetic hard crystalline rock such as andesite is certainly another. I'm not even sure it's possible although Joseph Davidovitz has noted possible organic material in the andesite of Pumapunku. He therefore believes that there was a method to create synthetic igneous rocks. In all honesty, I'm not 100% sold on the idea, but he does present a very strong case, and I made a video on his findings over a year ago. The paper by Davidovitz carries a bold statement, saying, Tiwanaku Monuments, Bolivia, are made of geopolymer artificial stones created 1,400 years ago. By conducting SEM and petrographic analysis of the andesite, Davidovitz noted organic material within the crystalline structure, which is, of course, impossible if it was formed by nature. These findings were published in the journal Ceramics International. Davidovitz also shows that the sandstone megalithic slabs that are found at Pumapunku are also man-made, and again, by analysing the composition of the stone. I'll link the relevant websites in the description below. 
Geopolymer is often viewed as a pseudoscience, but to refute the claims of Mackenzie and Davidovitz does now require scientific data to counter their findings, and so far there isn't any such data. So, the polygonal casing stones of the Bent Pyramid do look to be synthetic, and this may explain why we see the polygonal interlocking stone blocks, because they are in fact man-made. How it was done, nobody knows, but the implications are certainly exciting for the study of the ancient world. This may well be another example of ancient high technology. As some of you may know, certainly those that run independent channels on YouTube, views are down for most people, as independent channels are being recommended far less in 2020. So, it's thanks to Patreon supporters and the new channel members that I can continue to run this channel, conduct new research and report the latest news. So I just wanted to say a big thank you to you. Those that can't or don't wish to donate, that of course is absolutely fine, and your views are very much appreciated. I also have another channel called Space and Planet, and from time to time I'll be uploading new content. It will also act as a backup channel for ancient architects, so if anything was to go wrong, you could find me on the Space and Planet channel. I have also just started a Teespring merchandise store, and I'll be updating this every week with new designs. Some look good in my opinion, some are funny while some will be tongue in cheek, but sales of merchandise also support me in this channel. Thanks very much for watching, and there'll be more videos coming soon. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.